believe that Jesus came and died for your sins and took your sins on the cross of Calvary and put away your sins. He is your Redeemer, your Savior and your Lord. Confess Him as your Savior and Lord and you shall be saved. You have been so good to me You have been so good to me I came here broken, you made me whole, you have been so good, you have been so good, you have been so good to me. Sinner sins. It's, he's not a sinner because he sins. <laughs> a sinner sins because he's a sinner already. So some people, because they are sinners, those sinful deeds come out of them in full form. And that's not all. Some people live honestly and good life and so on. Yet they are called as sinners before God. Now, this is one it's like the Indian dosa, you know. You know. It has to be cooked. Two ways. You got to put it this way and then turn it this way. If a sinner is not a bad person, but he is a person that does not know God, if that's the Bible definition of sin, that means a sinner can be a good person, but yet does not know God. That's what a sinner. If that is true about a sinner, then what is a saint? What is a believer? Is exactly the opposite. Turn the dosa the other way. Is exactly the opposite. If sinner is one who can be good and yet be called a sinner, the saint is one who can be bad and still be called a saint. Now you understand it, you see. <laughs> you got the point now. <laughs> now some people come all the time, they complain now. Well, brother, I thought he's a Christian, but look at this kind of... Well, don't be surprised at that kind of a Christian. Nowhere in the Bible it says Christians are 100% fine people, you know. 
people, people, because they don't know this, they talk like that. I've seen all the Christians, brother, they're all bad. Whoever told you that they're all good? <laughs> we are saying that they are all saved. Saved means that they did not know God. They were disconnected from God. They're part of this Adamic race. Came from Adam, therefore they were sinners. Did not know God, but at some point in their life, they heard the message concerning this God and his love and the cross and Jesus Christ. And they came and believed in Christ and gave themselves to him. Came to him for the forgiveness of sins, for acceptance as sons. And God mercifully, not because they are such good people, they are 100% right. He knowingly, knowing that they are sinners and ungodly and enemies of God, the Bible says. God loved them and accepted them into his family, was gracious to them, washed them from their sins and received them with all their imperfections and is working on them right now. Do you know there are some bad Christians? Is it possible to have bad Christians? Yes. If it's possible to have good sinners, then it's possible to have bad Christians. So there are good sinners and bad Christians, you see. And after you become a Christian, after you become a Christian, having received Christ, then God graciously works on you. You go to church, hear the word of God, begin to practice the things of God. And day by day, day by day, hopefully you get better and better and better. God didn't choose you because you are so good. God chose you because he's so good. <laughs> you know. That's the grace of God, right? So I explained what a sinner is. When a sinner wants to come to God, see, I, I told you a sinner is born like that. Because he's from the Adamic race, he's a sinner. As soon as he's born, he's already a sinner. He was conceived in sin. And then at some point in his life, he comes to know about God and puts his faith in God and comes to the knowledge of God. And then, you know, he's called a saint because he now knows God. Sinner is one that does not know God. Saint is one that knows God. That's the difference. He now knows God. Now, how do you get saved? How do you come from not knowing God to knowing God? How do you come from being unsaved to getting saved? How do you enter into the salvation? So for that, the Bible says, look at, look at uh, Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. Paul is talking about how to get saved. He says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now a lot of people don't like this, you know, because they think, look at this Paul, he's always trouble. He's the one causing Chris, Chris, trouble in Christianity, you know. Look at him. Look at the way he presents the salvation doctrine. You want to get saved? He says, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, you'll be saved. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you will be saved. Why, is, why are people upset about it? Because they say, well, why is he not saying, confess your sins? Because Christians are big on confessing their sins. In fact, that's the only confession they know, confessing sins. And if you leave out confession, you're going to be in trouble. So they say, see, look at Paul. He's not emphasizing confession of sins. You now people, they have their own ideas, you know. Like one fellow told me, this fellow, brother, you don't know. He does everything in the book. You know, he's got sin number one, two, and three. I don't know what, I don't know which one is one, two. He's got his own cataloging system, I think, uh, classification system. So he says, he's got sins one, two, and three, you know. <laughs> and... Uh, we think in those terms, you know. So people read this and they say, what is this? If you just confess Jesus as your Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. How can that be? Don't you have to confess your sins? Is there a salvation that, comes, can, that can come to you without confession of sins? How can you leave out the big item of confessing your sins and talk about salvation? Now, <laughs> this is something very important for you to understand. Why is confession of sins left out? Why is confession of Christ mentioned here? Confession of Jesus mentioned here, while confession of sins left out? You see, when I was young, you know, my family would send me to all the youth meetings because they wanted me to change, you know. They were very eager to try to get me to change. So I'll be in all the youth meetings because my family said, go there. When you come back, you must come back as a new man. 
So I packed my bags and went to Wooty and Kodaikanal and everywhere, you know. Wherever the youth meeting was, paid money and attended the thing. And after, oh, I went to one, one of those meetings up in a hill and three days they had the meeting and the man preached. The whole subject was sin. That is, <laughs> sin, sin of youth. Eh? So he talked about sin for three days. After three days, I was very convinced that I'm a sinner, you know. <laughs> so, so, not that I was not convinced before, but now I was told a thousand times, you are a sinner, worthless, you dirty scoundrel. <laughs> Rascal, they said. You are a sinner, you need to change. So by third day, I was ready to go up and fall at the feet of God and call for his mercy because I knew I was a sinner. And third day, sure enough, he called us to the front. He said, come and get saved. And I got up and, and this is not the first time I've tried it so many times, you know. There's utter confusion. Some, some of the, so I went up there and I just earnestly prayed and I was standing there and they were singing and I was standing there and all the young people came and we all stood there. And then the man said, look, I'm glad that you all came and you, 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 God is working in you and, uh, and some of you are weeping and crying and all that. That's good. God is doing a mighty work. But you're not going to be saved that easy. You go home for three days, you weep before God and cry and fast. Now in those days... <laughs> <laughs> Now, in those days, fasting one meal itself is a difficulty. You know. The only reason you brush your teeth was because you want to eat, you know. You know. For a young person, eating is very important, you know. <laughs> and so, he said, fast and pray and we for three days. And he, then he said something interesting. It's like on a screen, like on a movie screen, the sins will just be running, you know. Like, a, like, the, like the titles in a movie, you know. <laughs> be running. And you can see your sins. God will show it to you. But these are the very fair, same people that told me I can't watch a movie, you know. <laughs> so I, you know, the screen business is something sinful. So I said, my God, you know, what is God doing with the screen now, you know. <laughs> He's showing me my sins and that. And he said, confess all of your sins. And he said, make sure that you confess everyone of those sins, don't leave anything out. Now, let me ask you something. Now, if you are a person that's even 20 years old, you've already been sinning for a long time. Many sins. So many every day. So if you add it all up, three days is not going to be certainly enough. And especially if you're 30, 40, 50 years old, boy, you got, you got tons and tons of sins to confess. And if you got to confess every single one of them, one by one and not leave anything out, then salvation becomes impossible proposition because no one can remember all their sins and no one can make sure that they can confess all their sins. So when the man told this, immediately I recognized that this is impossible. It's not going to work. First is fasting. It's not going to work. <laughs> Second... See, Jesus said, ask and it shall be given unto you. They have taken this and made it fast and it shall be given unto you. What can I do? No. That's not going to work, I decided. I said, plus this whole thing of confessing all your sins and requirement is that you should not leave out one. And this is not going to work. And plus three days is not going to be enough if you're going to confess all your sins. Even 30 days or 3 years or 30 years or 300 years is not going to be enough because by the time you confess finish confessing last one year's sin, you got accumulated a lot more. Because one year you've been sinning while confessing. I know how life works. <laughs> you got to be real. This is not going to work at all, you know. But the man insisted, that's how, that's how you get saved. You can't, it's, it's, salvation doesn't come that easy. Wrong. The Bible never says you confess your sins to get saved. Why is it not important to confess your sins in order to get saved? You would think that it's important to confess your sins to get saved. But the Bible doesn't seem to place any importance on that. Bible simply says confess Christ. Why? 
Because sin is no more a problem because Jesus carried it on the cross, carried the punishment for it, and put it away. Sin is not at all an issue today. That's the fact. Sin is not at all an issue. See, suppose a person has been suffering with some illness for long, many years, and there's no medicine available for it anywhere. So generation, we know several diseases. People used to die of typhoid in those days, cholera and all kinds of things. It's little diseases. Today, they just, you know, they just give a few injections. TB is another thing. Today, they just give you a few tablets, injections, few uh, nice treatment. You know, you don't even have to have surgeries. You'll be healed, you know. The other day, I was talking to someone, you know, whose father died when they were very young. You know, I asked, how did he die? They say, appendix burst. I said, my God, that's such a small thing. Why didn't he get it done? He said, yeah, they told him to do surgery, but uh, his father was afraid that uh, surgery may not be good because when you put a knife on a person, that might do something to the person. They didn't want surgery, so they kept him at home, and it burst finally, and, and it was over. It was in a young age, he died, you know. I felt so bad, you know, because people die, you know, in the, in the world, people have died of illnesses that today is nothing. Today it can be healed so well. So I'm talking about a real situation here. A person is sick. For many years there's no medicine for it. And for many generations there's no medicine for it. And then finally they come up with a medicine. And now the disease can be healed. Just by taking some tablets it can be healed. Some treatment can heal immediately now. Now if the person dies, did he die of the disease? No, he didn't die of the disease. He died because he didn't take the medicine for the disease. The disease didn't kill him. You can't blame the disease. You got to blame the guy for not taking the medicine. For many, many years, for generation to generation, for thousands of years, there was no answer to the sin problem. Men died in their sins. They were born in sins, lived in sins, and died and perished in their sins. And there was no answer. There was no savior. There is no real answer for sin problem. Then came Jesus 2,000 years ago. He is the answer for the sin problem. The medicine is now available. It has been available for the last 2,000 years. Now if someone perishes in their son, someone goes to hell, someone spends their eternity separated from God and in the, in the pain and the agony of hell, they have not God to blame, they have not their sin to blame either. They cannot blame God or they cannot blame sin because God has given an answer to the sin problem. Because an answer has come, only they are to blame because they did not receive the answer. All they've got to do, they should have just taken the medicine. They've just, they should have just gone and put their faith in Christ. They would have been saved from hell, from eternity without God, from the darkness of the dungeon, and for, from pain and, and all the suffering, they could have been saved. That is why when you want to get saved, the Bible says, you don't have to confess sins because sins are already taken care of. Jesus carried it, carried the punishment for it, did away with it, put it away, everything made salvation ready. Now what do you confess? It's like taking medicine. Just confess Jesus is your Savior and Lord. Just confess that he died for your sins. Believe that Jesus came and died for your sins and took your sins on the cross of Calvary and put away your sins. He's your Redeemer, your Savior, and your Lord. Confess Him as your Savior and Lord and you shall be saved. Amen. Take the medicine, you'll be healed. That's all. So it says, a sinner who wants to get saved, what kind of confession he makes? He makes a Confession of Jesus as Savior and Lord, which shows that he has believed that Jesus bore his sins and put it away. And he has put his faith in Christ, right? That's the confession he makes. Confession of Jesus as Savior and Lord. Is that a good confession? Yes. That's, that I would call a positive, positive confession. Is the confession of John the Baptist a good confession? The confession of sins? Yes, because people were returning to God. The confession of sins... Under John the Baptist, I would say it's a good confession because people were coming back to God. People were backslidden, forgotten God. 
They were coming, it's a good spiritual sign, coming back to God, right? Okay. Third confession is the confession of the believer when he sins. That's the third confession. Confession of the believer when he sins. You find that in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. If we confess our sins, he's writing to the believers. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. John writes to believers and he says, believers, listen, he says, if you ever sin, do you ever sin? Or oh, let me not ask like that. Have you known any believer that has sinned? Heard about some believer who sinned? John says, believer, if you ever sin, if you just happen to sin, I'm not saying it's all right to sin, go ahead and sin, because 1 John 1, 9 is there. <laughs> see, some people have a mind, crooked mind, you know. You see Pastor Sam, what he said, you know. He said, 1 John 1, 9 is there, don't worry, go ahead and sin. 1 John 1, 9 will take, no, I didn't say that. I'm saying if you happen to sin, if you happen to sin at any time, you must confess your sin. Why is confession of sin important for a believer when he sins? See, you shouldn't be raking up all the bad stuff, all the bad stuff that you've done sometime in your life that has already been put away and be talking about it now and confessing it now. Oh, brother, in 1939, I took a pen from that place. You know, I feel so bad. I'm just a sinner. I'm unworthy. Shake that off of you, you know. <laughs> it's all gone. Finished. It's talking about after you're saved, now if you sin today, you can certainly remember what you did today, right? It's not a hard thing. It's not like, you know, remembering your whole life's sin. It's sin today. Why is it important to confess your sins when you sin it today? When you, it's important to confess it today because sin, sin causes a real disturbance in your fellowship with God, not your relationship. Your relationship with God is the same. He's the father, you're the son, Right? That relationship cannot be changed. The certificate says who the father is. You can't get the corporation to write a different name, you know. I don't like this man, you know. <laughs> Take the name and write another name, brother, you know. I want to have so-and-so as my father. No, they won't do it that easy. You got to, that's a big process if you want to be adopted by someone, you know. If you've been born to a father, you're stuck with him. If he's a bad one, you're stuck with him. If he's a good one, you're stuck with him. If you don't like him or like him, you're stuck with him. That's it finished. You can't change. Only Christians change fathers so quickly. <laughs> One fellow came and told me, brother, I was a child of God, but now I've become the child of the devil. I said, how can <laughs> I said, since when? Today, brother. Say, you can change fathers in one day, man? Is it possible to be a child of God yesterday and be today a child of the devil? No, brother, I sinned, you see, that I must be a child of the devil now. No, 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 that's not that easy to change it. It cannot be changed, in fact. You are son, son forever. Amen. It's sealed. It's fixed. There, it cannot be changed. You are son forever. Right? What changes is the fellowship that you have with the father.
Yeah. 